Welcome to another video. We have a limit problem with x approaching negative infinity. This problem is very easy for millions of people and impossible for millions of people. Now, let me tell you the difference between these groups. If you're one of those who adore L'Hopital's rule, this is going to be impossible for you. If all you do is L'Hopital's rule when you see indeterminate form 0 over 0, you attack it with L'Hopital's rule, well, you're going to be stuck forever. So, but if you think what I'm saying is not true, go ahead and do L'Hopital's rule and let's see how you enjoy it. However, if you love algebra, this is going to be beautiful and sweet. If you're in the algebra camp, let's get into the video. So let's give this problem a close look. Let's look at this. X is approaching negative infinity, so it means this is 7 raised to negative infinity, but we know that raising something to negative infinity is 1 over 7 to infinity, so this is going to be going to 0. This goes to 0, this goes to 0, everything goes to 0. So this is a 0 over 0 situation. and. For the lovers of L'Hopital's rule, this is the first thing you want to do. You want to attack it. Take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Now, go ahead and do that and tell me how it turns out. It's going to get very messy and the mess will never go away. So, it is always advisable to clean up your algebra and not just be so quick to do L'Hopital's rule because it's not always the fastest way out. Now, what about algebra? See, the first thing I want to tell you is, whenever you're dealing with negative infinity, if possible, switch it from negative infinity to positive infinity. It makes life a lot easier because, you see, we tend to have a better picture of what happens as things get bigger than what happens as you keep going negatively smaller bigger negatively. That's what I mean. So, what I want to do first as my first move is to replace the variable, okay? That's what I, I, I didn't used to do this, but it's a better way because we tend to understand infinity better than negative infinity. It's harder to picture, okay? So what I want you to do is, let's say let, let's take a variable like t. Let t be equal to negative x. So t is negative x, which implies x equals negative t, okay? One is the negative of the other. Now we want to replace this. As x goes to negative infinity, watch. If x goes to negative infinity, this t is going to go to negative negative infinity, which is going to t goes to infinity. So we can go back and rewrite this whole limit problem and go this way and say that the limit as t goes to infinity, now, anywhere we see x, we're going to replace it with negative t. You're going to see how easy life is going to turn out. So we're going to have 7 to negative t minus 8 to negative t plus 9 to negative t divided by, this is going to be 9 to negative t plus 8 to negative t minus 7 to negative t. This may not be as obvious as it should be. Let's write it one more time. Now remember, anytime you're dealing with infinity, it is better to have rational expressions or fractions. It's easy to deal with. So what I'm going to do is say that this is the same thing as the limit as t goes to infinity of, I'm going to write this now as a fraction. So this would be 1 over 7 raised to power t minus 1 over 8 raised to t. And this is plus 9, 1 over 9 to the t. Hey, come on. 1 over 9 to the t divided by 1 over 9 to the t minus 1 over 8 to the t plus 1 over 7 to the t. So you would ask me, why did you do that? Why? Well, let me ask you. 
No, I'm not asking you. Let me tell you. Whenever you're dealing with the target point being infinity, you want to make sure that, and it's a rational front expression, you want to make sure you know the largest, uh, the largest term in the denominator. So let me ask you, which of these terms is the largest? Let's assume you're ignoring the t. Which of these is the largest of these terms? In terms of magnitude, it is this one. Not this one, and not this one. 1 over 9 is less than 1 over 8, and it's less than 1 over 7. So 1 over 7 is the biggest term in the denominator. That's what you always look for. What do you do with it? You take this biggest term, you use it to divide everything that you see in the rational expression. If you watch other videos, that's what I ask everybody to do. Take this term, use it to divide every single thing you see. Well, because this is a fraction, using this to divide is the same thing as using the denominator to multiply, right? So, let me write the line. So, divide every term by 1 over 7 to the t. And doing that means you're multiplying by 7 to the t. You remember, you flip, right? So, we're going to flip, we're going to do all the div this division, so this is going to be equal to the limit as t goes to infinity. Now on top, if I multiply this by 7t, or if I divide it by 1 over 7t, which is what we're doing, this is going to become just 1. Nice. Minus. If I multiply this by 7t, I'm going to have 7t over 8t, which is the same thing as 7 over 8 raised to power t. I meant t, not raised to power t, not just t. Okay, next one. This one is going to be plus 7 over 9 raised to power t. Now I'm going to divide. This is going to give me 7 over 9 raised to power t. This is going to give me minus 7 over 8 raised to power t. And if I multiply this by 7t, I'm going to get minus so this is going to be plus 1. Hey, well, this is minus. Hey, come on. This is supposed to be minus. Don't mess it up. Come on. Minus. So this is a, a plus. <laughs> come on. So there we go. And this is going to be 1. We're done. How do I know we're done? Because whenever you have a proper fraction raised to a power, that is going to infinity, that proper fraction will become zero, right? It goes to zero because the, bot the bottom is increasing faster than the top is increasing. So it becomes zero. So what we're going to have is basically, if you now take the limit, this is going to be one minus, this guy is going to go to zero because the bottom is smaller than the top. I mean, the top is smaller than the bottom, so what you have is zero. The top is smaller than the bottom, so as this goes to infinity, this is another zero. And this is going to be a zero. And this is going to be a zero. And this is going to be just minus one. So you end up with this, one on top, minus one under, and the answer to this is negative one. Easy. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.